down here in Virginia with Kyle Kruckenberger, Alex Poole, and Benton Bowman. And these guys uh, were added to our field staff this year. And if there's anybody that's familiar with night hunting at night with thermal imaging, it's these guys right here. I'm real fascinated by this whole night vision and thermal imaging stuff. It's, it's something that I've done a few times, but I've never filmed a complete show using nothing uh, but thermal imaging and night vision. You know, I know Mike has used thermal uh, a little bit, but you know, we wanted to expand his horizons as far as that goes and, uh, you know, get him down here and let him use some of our equipment. We got this uh, Ruger 556 here with this uh, EOTech uh, reflex with this magnifier on the back. This is a thermal clip on by L3, it's the LWTS. And um, we got a silencer co harvester suppressor here. We're gonna try and get this thing zeroed in at 100 yards here and uh, make sure this is collimated with the, the day optic here, make sure everything's good to go. It is a coyote killing setup and I'm excited to use it and use nothing but that setup down here in Virginia on this trip. I just got down at the first stand and as you can see it's pretty hot out already sweating. It's probably about 80 degrees, 85 degrees. It's a lot colder than it was for the day but it's still warm out. Didn't see anything that stand. Hopefully things will pick up here the next few stands. We were driving down the road and Coyote actually stepped out in front of Kyle and just kind of looked at him and uh, went over into the field. We gave him a second to go, you know, over the, the ridge in the field and out of sight and uh, we made a move on him. We get set up and start scanning and that coyote comes in. Right here, Mike, to the right, to the right, to the right. I see him, I see him. I'm thinking this is the, the first coyote that we've seen in this thermal on a trip, so you don't want to miss that first coyote, that first opportunity. I see him right there. There. That coyote comes in, stops at 80 yards, I shoot it, make a good shot, and, and drop it. Good shot, good shot. Let's keep going. We're looking, we're scanning after we shoot that one, and we spot three more coyotes down in the lower field. We threw some sounds at them. They weren't, you know, really responding. They'd look at us and weren't coming in. We flipped it over to the uh, female whimpers, and, I mean, just like it was written up, they, they read the script. They charged across that field, uh, like exactly like I was hoping that they would. They're coming running across the field, and they stopped out there at about 100 yards. Go ahead and take a one on the left. Got him. Uh, I shoot the second coyote's down, but then Alex shoots again, and he's got a third coyote down over there. So we're sitting here, our first filmed opportunity to shoot, and we've got a triple down in Virginia. <laughs> That's what First I'm talking about, buddy. Night. Yes, sir. Second stand of the night yeah. triple here in Virginia. That's freaking awesome. Done. Two females and a male. Uh, That's a male. That's a female. female. A Two male, males. a female, and a male. Yep. Second stand of the night, soaking wet. Three coyotes. Young evening, man. It's, yep. uh, it's time to go get some more, because I it. promise you, we're going to shoot some more. Absolutely. Let's Stay tuned. It. We pulled up to a spot to locate, and as we located, the coyotes answered us maybe 400 yards. We actually start spotting the coyotes coming out directly in front of us. All right, Mike, we've got a pair right here in the bottom We're going up a hill. They're not coming directly into us, they're kind of skirting off to the side of us a little bit. Going out around us. Of course, they skirted us and actually went over a knoll, so we had to make a quick move. We picked up, shuffled up the hill, and when we got in place, they were standing on the hill. Ooh. I'll take the one in the front. I'm going to shoot the one in the back. We decided we were going to try to shoot at the same time, and that works about 10% of the time. And fortunately, I was, I was able to, to drop mine, and the, the other one lived to see another day. The one I double there, if I would have hit one, good shot. Yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> you know what's good about me not hitting one? What's that? I don't have to go up and chase one. Yeah, I know, <laughs> that's what. <laughs> good size, though. How far was it, 120 yards? Oh yeah, at least. 
It's a little darker color. Yep. A little white patch right there. Yep. Kind of like the solid black on the video. We got another coyote down. The temperatures may be hot, but we're still killing coyotes here in Virginia. Well, let's go get Mike. Go kill some more. Do it. Located up a little farther, but we didn't hear anything. We came down here, located from right here. We had some coyotes going right over here, so we're just going to hop right over the fence, try to call these coyotes over here. We went out and located a few nights before Mike came down. Uh, knew the coyotes were there, and we knew it was going to be a, a good spot. They heard the coyotes right over here, right? We're just going to hop over the fence. Okay. We got out into the field, set up. It was a little taller than we had liked. The farmer had cut it a few weeks ago, but with all the rain we've had, it was uh, starting to grow pretty fast. But we decided to get up on this first field and set up. We get set up on this coyote, start calling, and it's coming in. There he is right there, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. By the, by the time we, we got to the guns, he had made it over this, this knoll in the field and we, we really couldn't see him that well. We moved to the right a little, about 50 yards out, and uh, he presented a good headshot for me and I decided that was the time to take it. All right, I'm gonna take it. Ooh. All right, he's down, get it. Yes, man. Good job. Oh. Good shot. I never even saw that guy out. He was down, I'm sitting down low, you guys are standing up, I didn't even see him. Kyle gets on it and he sees it, he makes a great shot, shoots him in the head, 30, 40 yards, you know, great shot. But more importantly, we're sitting here in the first night in Virginia and we've got five coyotes down. You got him, Benton. We know who's dragging that one back to the drop. Yeah, nice big male. <laughs> That's how you guys, that thermal imaging makes the difference. You know, being able to come down and see what they can't see, I mean, that's just, thermal imaging is the way to go. Coming down here, you, you know, has already on day one far exceeded anything that I would have expected this trip. Um, and it shows me that these guys have really done their homework. They've worked their tails off to make sure that we are able to take advantage of every opportunity they put in front of us. So hats off to those guys. We've got five coyotes down the first night. What more can you say? Hunting mid-August, a lot of people don't think about hunting coyotes. I mean, typically you think about hunting them um, in the winter time or the spring time, you know. It, it's a heat index and I've hunted in temperatures anywhere from minus 30 and now I can add that 100 plus degrees to the conditions that I've hunted in. You know, but when you're hunting this time of the year, you've got to put everything in your favor. We like to get out and get close to these coyotes and uh, set up out in these open fields where we get better shot opportunities. and. And we hunt them at night just for the simple fact that they like to, to feed during you know, the night time and it's a lot easier to, to get on them and they don't play the wind quite as much as they do during the daytime. This is the second night, about to make the first stand. It's gonna be pretty hard to beat last night, five coyotes last night. It's gonna be pretty hard to beat that, but you know what? We're gonna do everything we can to try to beat five coyotes tonight. Yep, give them a shot. <laughs> So this next day, and they know that there's coyotes in, in, in this area. They've, like I said, these guys have been working hard, done their homework. They know the coyotes are in there. So we decide to get the call set up, and we start calling. And uh, we have some coy uh, coyote coming out from the bottom. It's coming from the right. All right, all right, there he comes, over the hill, top of the hill. I see him. He's going 
found me on that hill. All right, here he comes back. Good spot. Thanks, Good man. Shot, man. Good call him. You know, that second night has proven to be a challenge. You know, unlike that first night where you saw everything moving, there's just not much happening at all. You know, we're, we're hunting our butts off and, and, and to call one coyote in, it's kind of frustrating, you know, but we were able to capitalize on, on what we called in. We have another coyote down. <clears throat> Well, he's an old coyote. Boy, his top teeth are worn down pretty good. Do you smell as good as the ones we got last night? I'm sure he doesn't smell any better. <laughs> but I don't know how he could smell any worse. It was a long night. We hunted hard all night long, and we had one coyote that we saw. I mean, we had those other couple that we heard, but it just was not a good night. You know, we, we hit a lot of good stands tonight that I knew have a lot of coyotes on them, they just weren't talking. Mm -hmm. Nights like tonight that make you appreciate the good nights that much better. Yep. We're going to go get some sleep and come back and we'll see you here in a little bit. Uh, we're right outside of uh, Appomattox. We're going to head down here to this farm outside the Surrender Grounds. Uh, rained down here a little while ago. Hopefully the uh, fog's going to hold off for a couple hours. We can get a couple stands in. We've had some weather that that uh, that could be moving in on us that could really affect some of the the, the way that we're going to hunt. And with night vision in particular, you can't have any fog. And with the storms moving in, with the high temperatures, the high humidity, you know, the fog is not going to be our friend. We're going to try to find some places outside the fog and. and uh, we ought to be able to. We've got plenty of land around here, so. We're on the third night. The coyotes just are not responding. We're, we're not having the luck that we've had. And we get set up in this one area that they know these coyotes are in, and we hear the coyotes way off to the left. We got over to this cow pasture, probably 500 yards from where we had originally set up at, and uh, immediately after we popped over the knoll, Benton said there's two coyotes in the woods. Mike, 12 o'clock right there on the wood line. Two of them coming in. By the time we got the, the camera equipment set up and the guns set up, they had already made it out into the field. I finally look and I get them in the X320 and I've got two coyotes standing in front of me. I can't get on them. They run away. I think there was just a little bit of miscommunication between uh, you know the camera guys and the the shooters and getting on target. we will take our lumps on that stand and we're going to move on. We're going to continue to try to kill these coyotes here in Virginia. It's getting late in the evening. We uh, go to a farm that uh, we know there's coyotes on. It's a, it's a huge field. We start calling, start out with some uh, coyote vocals and we get some to respond and, and they are a long ways away. We can barely hear them. Here they come. And they're looking through the thermal imaging and right away they're saying, they're, those coyotes are coming and they're moving in a hurry. I see them. They start slowing down. There's a fence uh, probably 150 yards out. They, they check up right before they get there. They're still coming. Come to about 100 yards. My battery just died of my EOTech. You're going to shoot him. We're going to let Mike shoot. He, he was up, and uh, his EOTech died. And he, he looks over at me and says, Alex, you're going to have to take the shot, bud. All right, I'm going to shoot. Nice shot. We needed that one. Gosh. That stand right there was intense, man. Let's go get this one and go to the next stand. We needed that one. They haven't been running all night. We could get one or two. One, well, one more would be perfect. We, get, we gotta move pretty quick. You 
It's late summer and we're night hunting coyotes in Virginia. We was told a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago that Mike would be coming down to hunt with us and of course I was excited to hear that. Then I was told it was in August and I knew that the conditions would be tough. We, we'd done our homework, we beat our hunting grounds and we located coyotes and we knew where we needed to be and how we needed to do it. There he comes right, right out in front, right out in front right here, 100 yards. Awesome. I'm doing everything right. I'm following that coyote in, and it comes up, and the coyote stops at 80 yards. You want him? I don't know if he would sit there or not. I think I heard the bullet hit him. I don't know how I missed that first one. You know, that's frustrating. I'm sitting here hunting for two nights straight, not having much luck. We get one coming in at 80 yards. Pull the first shot and missed it. I don't, I don't know how you can play that. But hopefully one of those shots going in hit it, so we'll go down and see if we can't find them down here in the woods. Yeah. We're sweating our tails off, we're doing everything right, and for that coyote to come in and miss him at 80 yards, you know, it's a gut-wrenching feeling, but we're gonna keep after him, we're gonna stay after him, we're gonna hopefully get a, a, another coyote before the end of this show. It's getting late, this is probably gonna be our last setup of the evening, so we go down and we get set up. Wide open field, you see some cattle off in the distance. I look out across the field and I see this white object coming running in pretty good. It's moving like a fox. That's definitely a fox. Hi, right, buddy. Good shot. Hey, man. That's a Virginia Red. That's my Virginia Red Fox. I've shot grays, coyotes. I have shot a Red Fox in Virginia. <laughs> I'm going to check him out. It's a serious male. My last, last uh, staying in Virginia, come down and we shoot six coyotes, yeah. and we end up with a red fox. Filming in August in Virginia, we knew it was going to be hot. We knew that there was going to be a chance for thunderstorms and fog. We also had a full moon. Considering those factors, you know, to come away with seven coyotes and a, a red fox, it's a really good trip. I'm living Virginia knowing that I've made some new friends. I've learned some of their setups. I've learned some of the ways that they incorporate thermal and night vision. Got some good footage, had a great time, had to meet some great people, and uh, looking forward to doing it again. Till next time, keep watching fur takers. Thanks.